Hi, I'm Duncan Mainland, and this is Snowboard Addiction. Today we're going to have a look at pressure. Not the kind of pressure you put on yourself or you get from society, but the kind of pressure you get while you're snowboarding. More specifically, pressure from the turn. We're going to look at eliminating heel side chatter, which is a big problem and nobody likes, and we're going to get a little bit more aggressive on our toe side edge. We're going to start off really simply with a really fast stop. We're gonna start by going straight down the mountain, get up a little bit of speed, and then stop as fast as you can. We'll do this on our heel side first. If you haven't played too much with pressuring before, you might get a lot of chatter on your heel side edge. This is from your board gathering a lot of pressure underneath it, and that pressure having nowhere to go, but just to bounce your board along. To eliminate that heel side chatter, as you start to turn your board sideways to get into the side slip, drop down nice and low. That way your knees are going to be really bent and you can apply pressure to your board throughout the stop. When you're doing this, timing is very important. Standing up too fast will mean that you've used all the energy in your legs before you've come to a full stop. You want to try and keep that nice even pressure throughout the whole move so by the time you fully stood up, you're at that standstill. Toe side isn't such a big deal with chatter. Most people don't find chatter to be so bad on the toe side edge. However, a lot of people do struggle applying pressure to their toe side edge and getting a really strong, solid stop. To get better at the toe side turn really comes down to a bit of body position. It's hard to apply pressure to your board if you're all twisted up looking down the hill. Ideally, to apply pressure on a toe side turn or toe side stop, you want to get really low on your board using your ankles, knees and hips, trying to keep everything in line with one another. This way it's easier for you to get down nice and low and apply pressure to the snow. Whether you're doing stops on your heel side or toe side, getting down low should be very similar. You want to get low using your ankles, knees and hips, not so much using your waist and your back. We want to put power into our legs and you can't get power into your legs by bending your back over. You need to get low by thinking about dropping your butt as close to the board as you can. To start using this movement, Find a small pitch where it's not too steep or you feel comfortable going straight down the hill. From here, you can go up and down trying to really exaggerate this movement. Get as low to the board as you can and then stand back up again. Try doing this keeping your hands over your nose and tail with your back as straight as you can get it. After you feel comfortable doing the stop straight down the hill and you've eliminated that chatter on the heel side and you feel really comfortable digging your edge into the toe side, we can take this laterally across the hill. When we're doing turns, we're not trying to apply pressure at the end of the turn where our board's facing down the hill. Ideally, we want to get that pressure happening earlier in the turn when our board's facing the sides of the hill. To accomplish this, we're going to try and get our speed across the hill by doing a bit of a quick traverse. Now we're going to take the same movement we did last time and just turn it 90 degrees. Instead of coming straight down the hill and stopping, we're going to come across the hill and stop trying to spray snow into the trees. It's important when you do this, you don't worry about how much snow you're spraying. I know it's nice to watch snow spray into the trees or cover one of your friends, but if you want to make sure that you're in a good body position and getting the most out of this move, think about looking into your next turn. As you do that spray, you don't need to come to a full stop. As you start to slow down, you can release that pressure and just move on into the next traverse. Do this on both your toe side and your heel side. As you bring this into your turns, timing becomes very important. As you get better and better at your turns, you're going to be getting on your edge earlier and earlier. So generally the timing goes, as you get on your new edge, that's when you want to sink down to your lowest and start applying pressure to your board. This should be a continuous movement. There shouldn't be any dead time in your turn. It'll be get low on your new edge, press, press, press all the way throughout the turn. And as you're ready to change edges, you should be nice and tall, squat edges, drop down low and press all the way through the next turn. Snowboarding is now going to be an active sport for you. No more hanging out, just watching the world go by. Once you're feeling comfortable doing turns, pressing throughout the whole turn, you've eliminated that heel side chatter, and you're feeling very comfortable on your toe side, you can experiment with the size of your turn. You can start with big turns and think about funneling them down to get smaller and smaller. You'll notice as your turns get smaller, the pressure changes a little bit and your timing will have to change with it. 
you won't have as much time to pressure throughout the turn, but you'll be developing more pressure underneath the board. So that press has to be a little bit stronger. Do turns like this, pressing as hard as you can until your legs get tired. There's no point in finishing the day feeling great. You might as well be exhausted. I'm Duncan Mainland, this is Snowboard Addiction, and our goal is to improve your riding.